Better systems at seasonal off-grid properties will require a different level of care heading into the fall and winter months. Here to walk us through a fall maintenance checklist for solar installers trying to stay ahead of those issues for their customers and provide added value is Jeff Miles, Marketing Manager of Rolls Battery. Hey Jeff, uh, thanks for taking the time joining us today. Great, happy to be here. So let's kind of start with the stakes of the matter. Why is having a fall maintenance routine important for seasonal properties? Uh, I mean, are you saying just packing up and leaving the batteries there from October to February is a bad idea? It all depends on the particular scenario of that install. Uh, in most cases, a seasonal property would be used during the summer months, and then you would have several months of usage, uh, you know, kind of crammed in there. And then after that, you would have the system in storage for a long period of time. Um, when you're storing a system, especially with regards to the batteries, it is best to actually make sure that those batteries are fully charged and before you put the system into storage um, to prevent the batteries from over discharging. Batteries do self discharge. And so if a battery is fully charged and then you just disconnect it, 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 it will actually self discharge naturally. And the rate of self discharge increases as a battery is kept in warmer temperatures and it slows as the, the temperature drops. So let's say it's a seasonal property and you just left your system, then over the winter months, if it's really cold, those batteries are not necessarily going to discharge at a very quick rate. But if it was warmer, then you could potentially see those batteries fully discharge while you're not there. When you come back, that can be a bit of a, a challenge to get the system back up and running. And so it is really important to, to be aware of that. That maybe kind of answers part of my next question, but you know, I, I want, before we actually address the battery systems themselves, I was wondering you know, about the property um, and what a different location, if they were, would require a different checklist. You know? So in terms of either the remoteness of the property um, or the climate, like you mentioned, or maybe the, the usage of the property in general, you know, I guess what are some attributes that installers should keep in mind um, when prepping their fall maintenance plan uh, for each individual property? Sure. Well, the number one thing would be climate. So climate is definitely an important factor. Uh, much like usage, each property is unique. So if you're operating the system in a very cold climate, uh, then certainly there's going to be the, the risk of having your battery bank freeze if it has discharged and is just sitting for long periods of time. You know, on the flip side, if it's operating in a very, very warm climate and those batteries are going to be resting for a long period of time, the self-discharge rate would increase. Again, going back to the cold weather, this is kind of the most common scenario that we run into or, or you know, a customer may have a, a challenge in the spring uh, related to cold weather because if the system is left connected and the batteries are, you know, connected and, and essentially providing power for the system to operate, even in standby, if the PV panels are fixed to a roof and they're covered in snow and ice, then they're not generating any power. If that particular system had uh, a roof mounted uh, PV panel versus a rack mount that could be adjusted, those things also would play a factor in that because roof mount, generally it's gonna accumulate more snow than it would be if you had a rack where you could tilt the panels throughout the winter to kind of alleviate some of that buildup. Um, and then also, if the system is actually installed in a climate controlled room versus in a you know, utility shed or garage that's not going to be climate controlled, that also plays a factor as well. Some systems, even if it's seasonal, may be set up with the intention of providing some level of heat in that area that would maintain the system properly. If it's going to be left for a long period of time and it's just set up in a utility shed, it's, all, it's often best to actually fully charge the battery bank, disconnect the system completely, and shut everything off to prevent any type of over discharge, but also to prevent damage to the rest of the equipment as well. Now let's kind of move to the more maybe general checklist, you know, so once you're on site and after doing kind of that assessment uh, that you just walked us through, um, what are the general preventive maintenance steps? You know, what routine should installers have? What are we checking? What are we adjusting? You know, and why are we doing these things? Sure. 
So it will often depend on the type of product that you're using as when it relates to batteries. Um, if the batteries are flooded, then you would want to perform specific gravity tests on each cell of the battery bank to, and this should be done routinely, but it should certainly be done at the beginning and the end of the season at minimum. And this is to determine that obviously all of the cells in the batteries are operating as intended and also that the charge is balanced. So when a battery bank is charged, ideally all of those cells should be at the same state of charge and they should all be charging equally. If that's not happening, then you would perform a corrective equalization at, and which is essentially a, co a controlled overcharge that would remove a buildup of sulfation that may have accumulated or any type of a charge imbalance during the months that you've used the system. And then it also prevents that sulfation from hardening on the plates when the, when the battery bank is left in storage for extended periods of time. So sulfation is kind of like a, a buildup, like calcium buildup, for example, where the longer it's left there, the more challenging it is to remove it. So it's important for you to try to remove that and get the batteries prepped for storage versus leaving it there and then having the challenge of trying to remove it in the spring. Flooded batteries also require distilled water. And typically, if you're using your system in the summer months, you're probably going to go through water a little more quickly because the batteries use up some of that water as they heat up during charging. So make sure that the batteries are obviously being topped up with distilled water throughout that season, but also to make sure that they're not left at a low level when you put them into storage because you could potentially run the risk of having them dry out. And unfortunately, that would be uh, damage to the battery that's not repairable. Another step in the maintenance process, battery terminals. When you charge a battery, the battery terminal heats up and then it cools off again. As that happens over time, the terminal connections will become a little bit loose and is normal. So the terminals should be inspected for any corrosion buildup, um, and then they should be disconnected, cleaned, and reconnected and retorqued to the manufacturer's specification. We recommend doing that at least in the fall, um, and potentially again in the spring, depending on the, the you know, temperature ranges that the batteries are sitting in storage, because if you have loose connections, those can actually arc or spark, and it can actually ignite uh, hydrogen gas. So it's important for you to make sure that they have a solid connection. It prevents damage to the terminals as well. If the system is shut off, it's a good idea to disconnect the cables to the battery bank to prevent any accidental discharge. So oftentimes equipment may be, you know, in a standby mode or, you know, your charger controller, you may be able to turn off the loads um, and prevent it from having draws from lighting or other, you know, uh, lows from the property but the equipment itself is still drawing power out of the battery bank. So it's best if you want to, if you intend to shut the system down completely to, com to disconnect those leads uh, that go to the battery bank to prevent any, any accidental discharge. And that will slow down that self-discharge rate on the batteries as well. And we mentioned before about snow and ice buildup. If it is a remote location where you don't have access to go to that property for extended periods of time, then we really recommend shutting the system down after you fully just uh, fully charge the batteries and then leaving the system versus leaving it connected and running the risk of having it discharged. If you do, you may end up with a bit of a surprise in the spring because those batteries will have frozen and the cases will expand, potentially crack, and then you end up with a, a spill to clean. Want to avoid that cracked case uh, scenario, definitely. So important note there at the end. So as we wrap up, um, is, is there anything else to assess that is maybe more proactive at this time um, that could extend the life of a system? Um, or I guess just thinking beyond getting it ready for the colder months, um, that's you know maybe a service added value benefit an installer could provide. Certainly. Um, so one thing to always keep in mind, and we stress this in our uh, installer training is that even with low or moderate use, um, an off-grid system is never set it and forget it. So the usage for that system could change based on you know who's living there, uh, the amount of time that they're spending there, especially with a seasonal property. In a situation like we've just had over the last year and a half, certainly a lot of, of customers may be using their systems more than they were previously. And so that puts higher loads on the system. They may be living in their seasonal property versus you know visiting there on the, on the weekends so that certainly also would would play a factor in that the output of 
your PV array is also going to have a significant impact on the performance of the battery bank. So if you size the system kind of, you know, based on best case scenario, and then, you know, the, the weather conditions may not be as favorable, or that system certainly wasn't designed for the usage or to be able to support the usage that, you know, the customer now has, that can have a, a direct impact on the performance of the batteries. And then they most likely would either need to upgrade their system or potentially end up running into a situation where they need to replace the batteries because they're simply just overspent. Looking at the available charge output season to season as well, if it was designed for seasonal property use only in the summer, the usage, um, even, even if it was the same usage throughout the winter, the amount of power you're generating also would be impacted, especially in conditions where you know, the solar panels may not be operating as efficiently based on the angle that they're, they're mounted and so on. Um, that also will play a factor as well as shortened daylight hours. So adjusting charge voltages, uh, charge times throughout the year to compensate for those things, at least once a year, do a full site, a system inspection, make sure that none of the other system components are having any difficulties or loose cable connections, uh, damage wires, anything like that, uh, corrosion. And one thing that is very common, a lot of times with systems with flooded batteries, if the com system components like the inverter or charge controller are mounted on the wall directly above a battery bank, there is a risk for corrosion because of the hydrogen off-gassing on a battery bank if it's not properly ventilated. So that can actually tamper with the, the system components and you could run the risk of, of damage to that equipment. So it's important to inspect that and make sure that everything is, is you know, as it should be. Um, the other big thing, again, is ventilation. So if you have a battery bank with a ventilation system set up, it's important to check that as well uh, to make sure that it's clear, there's no obstructions in the ventilation system. These oftentimes make a great spot for birds and animals to try to nest in. Uh, and so certainly you want to try to make sure that, you know, it's operating properly, um, that you're able to get that airflow and that, uh, you know, you're certainly not running the risk of a, a hydrogen gas buildup when you're working with flooded batteries. Uh, really great info, Jeff. Um, uh, I guess just lastly, uh, where can we get more info on Rolls Battery itself? We have more questions. Sure, so uh, the easiest way, visit our website. It's just rollsbattery.com. We have a full support page uh, with a number of different support articles. You can search by keyword. We also offer a ticket service where our technical support team will answer your questions. Uh, we have put a lot of information into our battery user manual that goes well beyond just the use of the battery because we obviously understand that in the renewable ener energy industry, these customers will run into situations where they may have questions related to the system setup and how that's going to impact the batteries. So we want to be able to help them out as, as much as possible.